Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and in September on Humble Bundle, there was a bundle for Blender Market, and in this bundle are two incredibly popular plugins I promised to cover before the end of the bundle, so you know if this bundle was a good pickup for you. Well, technically... <laughs> this is still before the end of the bundle. Uh, but truth of the matter is, it hasn't been extended yet. I almost guarantee you there's another week left for you to pick this one up. But if you want to be safe, you're going to want to operate on this one in the next 24 hours to guarantee you pick it up. So what exactly was this bundle? Well, it is the best of Blender Market 2024. And the star of the show for me is Hard Ops and Box Cutter. Uh, so the ultimate bundle of those two plugins. But there is a ton more in this. By the way, if you've caught my first video on this bundle, I got some good news for you. Uh, some things have actually were added to this bundle. So there was even more added to this great bundle of uh, some of the most popular Blender add-ons out there. So there's some great stuff you could pick up for Blender uh, for like what was it, 30 bucks? Yeah, 30 bucks US. Um, but the key thing that we're gonna be looking at here is hard ops and box cutter. Before I move on though, I do want you to know something very important. These are frozen in time snapshots. So you're not getting a license for them on the Blender market. You are getting, um, a, you're getting basically a zip file download version of each one of these. So if there are updates to them, you aren't getting them. Although when it comes to hard ops and box cutter, if you wanna go ahead and buy them, you can do that as well. It's a topic I've been meaning to cover for a a very long time anyways so as you can see you can get hard ops and box cutter together on gum road for like uh, so 37 bucks, which I think is a dollar cheaper than Blender Market, which is why I went with Gumroad. Uh, you can also just get Hard Ops on its own for $19 and Box Cutter on its own, on its own also for $19. So uh, if you want to have all of the updates, whatever, it's still a pretty cheap buy uh, if you don't want to go ahead and pick up the bundle. So if you don't want to get the bundle version with this limitation, I do have links down below to the Gumroad version uh, that you can grab that way. So now what we're going to do is take a look at both. Now I'm going to show you Box cutter first um probably because to be honest it's probably my favorite now i don't pretend to have any mastery of either one of these applications i was hoping to get a lot more hands-on time from this month and then there was just so much happened this month that i didn't get as much time to play with these as i would like so look at you're going to watch a video of a bumbling idiot doing bad things to a default cube all right so both of these install as plugins they're separate plugins basically just download the zip from the blender marketplace go to your plugins do an install add from zip and then you are good to go i've already enabled both now, box cutter works in a special way in that you are using it in box cutter mode. So how do you enter box cutter mode? Well, you hit the Alt key and the W key, and now you are in box cutter. And box cutter is all available up here, but at the same time, everything is done via menu. So if you want the helper menu up, hit D, and all of what box cutter does is available right there. Uh, at the same time, there's the mini helpy, helper window available via control D, like a pop-up pie window of everything that it does. And then uh, we also have the view menu, which is shift V for handling, you know, snapping and aligning to your views and so on. But box cutter is a mode. So you see when I'm in this mode, you got all these various different options here. And then I hit D again, uh, sorry, not D, um, W and I leave box cutter mode. So again, Alt W to enter box cutter mode. And what does box cutter do? Well, it says it in the name, it cuts. So what we do, we have our cube selected, we are in cut mode, we are in box mode, and I'm going to draw a box on the surface, we'll let go and then drag it out. And boom, we just created a cut in our surface. And that's kind of the essential of what box cutter is all about. It's taking, um, it's doing all your Boolean cutting options and moving them into a single tool to make it super fast to do so. The other thing you'll notice here is I'm in non-destructive mode and it keeps all of our cutters here. So if you want to go ahead, reuse them or move them or change them, all of that stuff, that is available. So these are not destructive. It's, it's a um, a stack of operations. Now, right now we're looking at box mode here for cutting. Uh, there are a variety of options. By the way, once again, you can get all the same options up with the D menu right here, which pops it up. So we are in cut mode for boxes right now. You could switch that out to uh, other cutters if you wish to do so. Uh, so here it's box. We could do it with drawing of line. So draw a line like so, and then drag that back. And there you saw another cutter right there. Or we could do um, a polyline or an N-gon. So here on the surface, and I can just basically draw whatever shape I wish to cut. And then uh, I think it's enter, and then boom, there is my cut right there. And we can also do um, a variety of other options. Now, one of the neat things here is if you've got nothing selected, and I'm say back here in uh, box mode or circle mode, something like this, if I have nothing selected and I draw, oh, I'm in line mode. 
All right, I don't want to be in line mode. I want to go back here to draw a line, turn that off. So here I am in just cut mode with box and I just drag with nothing selected. It actually can be used to create boxes in the world. And then you can again go when you select something and you've got box selected, boom, it does a cut and a carve into said object. Uh, and then again, on top of box, we have a variety of different other options there. And they are again, all available via the uh, helper menu right here. All your various different options are available here. All your settings are available there. We got some snapping options for dealing with everything. Uh, we also have some cutters for doing specifically on uh, a surface so that you can have, uh, you can cut an object into another object if you wish to do so. You have mirroring tools built in here as well. But essentially it is a tool all about cutting up hard surfaces. So if you're doing, um, you know, typical Boolean operations for cutting. This is encapsulating them all together in this quick and handy tool with all of the tools you need in place. The other neat thing is you've also got this dots menu. So if I hold down control, I can um, snap to or, or work specifically with that one particular area. So uh, that is consistent across all of the plugins. That one there is box cutter. And now we're going to mess with another default cube. So let's come on down here. And the other one is hard ops. Now hard ops is a little bit more tricky to explain because box cutter does what it says on the tin. It is a tool for like making cuts, making um, basically Boolean subtractions. It's a tool that's specialized around doing so. Hard ops is more of an extension to Blender. So you see right here, when you've got hard ops installed, it shows up as a menu right here. And basically this is for all the hard surface modeling that you'd want to do in your scene. It's a collection of, a lot of times it's stuff that's built into Blender already. It's just organized in a way to make it more manageable. Now hard ops is also built around a collection of hotkeys. Uh, you hit the Q, to bring up uh, the hard ops menu. And what you're gonna notice here is for this particular object selected, so I'm in object mode for this cube, Q, I get sharpen, bevel, and so on. And then we got all these other tools that are built in here, including like some of the stuff, again, it's just exposing traditional modeling tools just in a more fast and convenient manner to you. But this is optimized based off of the, the quick speed of what you wish to work with. Uh, and then what you do here, I'm gonna go over here into edit mode instead, and I hit Q, you're gonna notice you get a completely different menu. And then I'm gonna select Let's go here, that's like nothing. And again, you get a completely different menu depending on what exactly you are currently working on. As well, there is the Pi version. So hit down Shift Q instead of Q and you will get a pop-up Pi version. Again, context sensitive based off what you are currently selecting. Now, one of the things you're commonly going to do with hard surface modeling is this. It's a bevel. So let's go ahead, we'll apply a bevel on our object. So here we go, our bevel comes in like so. The other thing you're going to notice is hardening. That's a very common thing as well. So let's go ahead and sharpen our corner. So here, sharpen like so, uh, and then the sharpening is applied. So how is that sharpening works? Well, let's go ahead and we will do a control tilde like so. And you're gonna notice this brings up the hard ops helper. What you're gonna notice is the sharpening here is controlled by this thing. So sharpening is actually setting creases, uh, B weight, uh, seaming and sharpening as well. You can also set the default global for the uh, amount of angle before sharpening kicks in. Uh, and those are all set here. A number of other hard op settings are available down here. So you got a variety of different settings going on here as well. And you've got quick material settings and so on available. You do have a view menu, uh, rapid material apply. You can uh, immediately apply a material to an object if you wish using hard ops as well. And if you do not want to mess with all of these shortcuts, you will also notice up here, you have a variety of hard ops settings as well. So we come across, you got control over a variety of different settings. Uh, some of these things can be turned on so you can have it automatically hide away the T panel when you're working with things to give you more real estate, for example. Oops, I'm in the wrong menu now. Uh, so all of your options are available right here. Uh, you also do have the quick Boolean operator if you wish. Uh, and then you got a variety of help materials here as well. Now, one of the things that hard ops does is it maintains a modifier stack for you. So right now we've been adding modifiers to it. So you can see these guys right there. Well, when you're working with hard, off, uh, hard operations, normally what you're having to do is manually move these things back to the top. But what you can actually do, hit Q, come on in here, your modifiers there, you've got these uh, multiple different modifiers in. So for example, I could come in here and add a screw modifier like so. So standard modifier, you can see how it's added over here. And then what I could do is come in here and I basically say, uh, add apply modifiers and it'll apply all of them or I can do a smart modifier apply and it will only apply the non, not these two. So what it's doing is it's manually keeping those modifiers at the top for us. So again, we'll go back here, uh, shift, oops, oops, sorry, control tilde. You're gonna see under the uh, context for the tools over here, your modifier stack is being 
uh, maintains so bevel and screw will remain at the top at all times very useful uh, tool here and again they do have uh, a tool here for smart apply so i could go in here and where is smart apply uh, smart apply and boom it will apply and keep the bevel modifier nicely at the top for us. By the way, you also notice that I have created some really garbage geometry here. That's another cool feature of hard ops. It has a built-in clean up here. Uh, so I could come in here and clean the mesh and it will take my garbage and turn it into something much more useful. Again, it's not perfect, uh, but again, I had created a very, very garbage mesh here. So that is what hard ops is. Basically, it takes all of your traditional modeling tools and organizes it together uh, into like this one place and then has a variety of like helper functions on here as well. And then a ton more that I'm not even gonna touch on in this one. So all of your tools in together here, they've added a number of other tools there. For example, I could do a curve extract uh, so I could pick a portion out of something and uh, we can pull it out uh, using a curve of abstraction tool here we have tools for automatically uh, solidifying objects and so on and they work perfectly together with the box cutter tools as well and there is some overlap between what the two of them actually do so that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very, very, very belated look at what hard ops and box cutter are all about. And if you want to actually learn how to use these, I recommend, again, the nice part here is if you go back into Blender itself, you're going to find under this category over here, a variety of tutorials that will get you up and going and places that will give you much, much, much better insight than what this video was all about. But if you're wondering what these tools brought to the table, uh, Hard Ops is basically a uh, modeling aid, puts everything together, makes the workflow nice, a bunch of uh, usability tweaks in there, uh, UX experience for you for everything you need for modeling. Uh, and then Box Cutter is a super powerful non-destructive cutter. And those two things basically work together. If you're doing hard surface modeling, so that's stuff like, you know, um, real world things, um, vehicles, mechs, that kind of stuff, uh, just an invaluable tool. I think hard ops, box cutter, along with machine are probably like the, um, the pinnacle of 3D modeling plugins when it comes to Blender. So once again, Blender Market, uh, this is supposedly going to be done in a day, but again, I don't believe it's been extended yet. It's sold really well. So I almost guarantee you, you probably have a few more days left, but if you're wanting to pick this guy up, you can basically get box cutter uh, and hard ops for the price of box cutter and hard ops. Uh, and then you're getting all of these other things uh, for free. So if you're interested, please do check that out. By the way, if you do use my links, uh, I do get a commission. So I greatly appreciate that. And by the way, if you missed it, so this bundle is over and you're thinking, well, uh, damn it, I want to get hard ops and box cutter. You can still get them, like I said, on Gumroad, Blunder Market. I will have those links down below as well. And it's still easily worth the 30 bucks in my humble opinion. And again, do remember that this particular bundle, you are getting a snapshot in time. So if you buy it from Humble, you are not getting updates. Whereas if you buy it from Blunder Market directly or Gumroad, you will get updates as they are released. But there is a ton of other stuff in this particular bundle. It's a hell of a deal if you are fine with having a frozen end time snapshot version. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Hard Ops and Box Cutter. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.